So how old were you when you had this realization that uh, or definite realization that you were the Messiah and that you had a role to play or well, my father had always told me that I was the Messiah, and, and I didn't believe him. Um, my readings of the prophecies were all about love. Every time I read them, I could see that God was trying to teach humankind about love, about softening their heart, not hardening their heart, not being violent, being gentle, having, having morality, you know, having a connection with mm. the truth. And, and some of the prophetic books really interested me. The book of Hosea really interested me um, because it illustrates the forgiveness process. Um, and, you know, these kind of principles, are, I, so I read into the prophetic books a lot different sort of things than what the average priest or synagogue leader would actually read into them. And so I saw it almost, I started to see everything as a love-based thing. So by the time I was 14 or 15, I realized that the Messiah was coming. I had a very strong feeling that the Messiah was coming. And the prophetic books of Daniel pointed to the time period I was living in as the time period of the Messiah. And so I then started looking for the Messiah. I didn't assume it was myself. I started looking for the Messiah you know, in others. So in any religious leader would pop up who seemed to gather a following, I would investigate their teachings and so forth and, and, and see you know, whether they knew about love, which mm -hmm. was what I felt was the mark of the Messiah. And sooner or later it became very clear that they didn't know about love. And so, you know, I'd give up the search for that particular person and see until another person came along. And I continued doing that until I was around 19 years of age. And then you went, uh-oh. Yeah, when I was around 19 years of age, I started having very emotional experiences about the potentiality of myself being the Messiah. And by the time I was about 21, that had solidified quite strongly in my, in my heart because nobody else seemed to know about love and I seemed to understand love and nobody else seemed to understand it along with a lot of other things that I seemed to have understood that nobody else understood including spirits and the spirit world and the condition of the earth and the moral condition the emotional condition of humanity uh, truth the the importance of truth in terms of your day-to-day -day interactions all of these principles that I was very firm on by now um, they were all pretty solid in me by that stage and so I started having to contemplate that I was potentially the Messiah, which still, when I think about, makes me feel quite emotional because um, it was a very emotional experience. Mm -hmm. um, and it's still quite an emotional experience when I think about that. Yeah. Um, so there were, during this time, there were a lot of events, of course, that occurred. My father, when I was 15, for example, my father would say, you know, to other people in Nazareth, that, you know, my son's the Messiah. By this stage, he didn't really know whether it was true or not. He, he, he was quite confused because he could see that I wasn't... Uh, he, living up to his expectations. Yeah, definitely not living up to his exp expectations at all. So he was quite confused and he was quite upset um, that I wasn't living up to his expectations. But um, he would tell everybody still the same thing. Now, of course, quite a lot of other people would get quite angry and upset about all that, and they'd laugh at him about that and laugh at me because I was so gentle and and so much of a pacifist and I didn't know how to fight, you know, and any time I got in a fight, I was always just let myself be beaten up. And when I was 15, um, a group of young boys in our, teenagers in our town, stripped me naked and beat me beat me up fairly badly and uh, my father was enraged after that he he was really really upset with my pacifist nature after that and um and then when i was around in my early 20s i was by this stage quite tall I, like i was around I, I grew to be around six foot tall and i was quite good with my hands with the with the uh because i was a part of dad's business by from the age of 12 onwards and so, you know, I, was, I became a carpenter, as the legend says. and um, It presumes, doesn't it? It doesn't really say. No, it doesn't really say. And my father wanted me to actually run the business. That was his underlying desire for me, which... which being the eldest son. Being the eldest son. 
and uh, and that wasn't my desire, which caused additional friction between mm. myself and my father. And then um, a, a local lady, a local girl, young girl, um, who had four brothers and a father, 